Now, I love this segment. It's a quick fire. Okay. I say a short statement. You give me your immediate thoughts. Does that Let's sound do okay? Let's do it. So what sales tactics have not changed over the last five years? I would say, you know, selling is an art and a science. And I think, um, but at its core, it's about really good listening and bringing value. So it, it's back to like people buy from people. And so it's really like good listening, connecting with that buyer and bringing value in response to their answer. So I don't think that's changed. What sales tactics have died a death? Oh, we talked about it a bit, but I think on-sites are dying a death. Not They're not gone, but I think we've learned how much we can do virtually. And so that old, like everything must be on-site, in-person handshaking has really changed. And it's a, it's crazy to see that we're not all on airplanes like we were just, you know, a few years ago, but it's changed. So I think it's, that's, that's definitely, I don't know if it's died a death, but it's, it's dying. What is the biggest mistake founders make when hiring sales teams? <sighs> Setting expectations. <laughs> I think it's really important to both have a common, like, here's where we think we need to, we can go. Here's where I, you know, like really having a mutual understanding and joint belief in those expectations. But you got to set them because if the founder believes here and the, the first sales leader thinks we can only get to here because those expectations weren't set, then you're just going to have a mismatch. You call up a new sales leader the night before they start their role. What would, advice would you give them? I would give them the advice of like really dig in and learn in those first, you know, 90 days deeply, but be prepared to relearn everything in 90 days. So it's like, you've got to go deep and understand and get in as many customer calls as you can and really under work to understand the mechanics and the operating rhythm of the business. But then you will take that basis of foundation and you're going to learn it again because you're going to have all that context and you're going to pivot your mindset and build off of that first 90 days. So I think it's like the expectation is just be ready to keep learning. That's not going to stop. You're not done after quarter one. What would you most like to change about the world of sales? This has changed tremendously in my career, but I would like to see more female leadership at the top. I think um, it, and it, again, it's changed so much in my, my time in sales, but just more female leadership um, would be something I would change. I mean, we have 20 sales fund, which is like eight of the most incredible sales leaders. And it was funny how it came together. Like it was not meant to be like an all female group. And then you're like, oh, wow. <laughs> I learned that actually it, women are just better than men at sales. <laughs> <laughs> and I, to your point, it's changed a ton, but it, which is great, but we just can't like, we got to take our eye off the ball. That has to be still a priority. So I, no, I totally agree. Yeah. Final one for you. Which company sales strategy have you most been impressed by recently where you look at it and you're like smart? Yeah, actually we recently, um, it's recency, but we recently bought Vitaly for our customer success team. So a customer success platform. And what I was really impressed with is um, really, clear communication the whole way and very direct and engaging. But what I really have noticed is post-sale is how they continue to stay connected and care about the success of our launch. And especially in this time where gross retention, you know, is so important and thinking about retaining every customer that you spent so much time earning, they've stayed connected through that whole process. So really clear communication, great sales process up front, but they're continuing it through all the way as we've become a customer. So I've been very impressed by that. 